In this video, we'll go through the position error correction data reduction process for the GPS geometric method, and we're going to do it in Python. Let's dive in! 3, 2, 1, top, 3, 2, 1, half, the flight test engineering channel. Okay, so we are in our typical Jupyter Lab environment here, running Python 3.10.6 at the time of the uh, release of the video. And we're going to go through the preamble for the cloverleaf geometric method here. So first thing that we typically do is control the version of our notebook. So this is going to be version 1.0 initial release. And of course, these notebooks are published on the channel's GitHub repository. And the link is on the in the description. Okay. So we're going to import the libraries that we need here. The first is NumPy as the numerical library and then matplotlib to plot, do the plots later on. And also we're going to set the style to dark background to match whatever I have here on my Jupyter lab. We also have the typical constants that uh, we use here, meters to feet, feet to meters and so on. Those are pretty standard. Also the international standard atmosphere, the temperature at sea level, pressure at sea level, lapse rate, speed of sound at sea level, density at sea level of air, of course, constant R, acceleration of gravity, gamma, which is the adiabatic index, and CP, all for air. And for our airplane here, we're going to set VMO to 350 and VSTAL around 15, 105, which is uh, typical for a, for a jetliner. And for our instrument errors, we have delta VIC as two knots, delta HIC minus 20 feet, and delta TIC as minus one degree C. And our temperature recovery factor for the, uh, for the probe is going to be 1.0. We have here some flight test data that I already uh, collected. So we have for the cloverleaf point three runs, or right, three legs. One, these are the indicated airspeed, 117, 116, and 118, indicated airspeed. The altitude was 6,000 feet and the temperature outside was 11 degrees C. And for, from the GPS side, we collected also the three values for ground speed, 138, 133, and 120 for the following tracks, 7, 114, and 234 degrees, okay? So we start first from the anemometric uh, side with the corrections for the instruments. So we add whatever we have instrument corrections to our indicated numbers to get instrument corrected numbers. Same thing we're going to do for our airspeed, altitude and temperature. And now we're going to find QCIC over P0 ratio. And why do we find this? Because we are going to later on use this to find the Mach number and the static port position error. So this is the center of our Mach equation. And we calculated through this equation uh, 1 plus 0 0.2 times the ratio of VIC over A0, which is a speed of sound squared, 7 uh, halves minus 1. Of course, we're using SI units for everything, so that's why we have to transform our VIC to, from knots to meters per second. Our speed of sound is already meters per second. So we obtain one value for each of the, uh, of the runs. Next up, we calculate the pressure ratio, delta IC, which is going to uh, be calculated through this expression. That's standard atmosphere as well. So we, again, for each of the test runs, because we have the same altitude, we obtain the same deltas. And then we can find QCAC over PS, because we already have QCAC over P0, but if we multiply by P0 over PS, which is 1 over delta, we get QCAC over PS. Okay? So this is, the, uh, this is the ratio already corrected to our external pressure here that we sense with our pitot system. And now we can correct, calculate the indicated Mach number with our QCIC over PS. 
So these are the Mach numbers that we had for our test points. And then from the indicated Mach number, uh, the total static, static port pressure, PT over PS. We can calculate through this expression here. And that's, uh, we are already taking the mean value of our indicated Mach number because that's one of the assumptions, basics from this method is that the indicated airspeed is going to be constant throughout all of the uh, legs, right? So it's reasonable to get the mean here. Okay, so this, is, this figure is here just to remind us what we're doing, as I explained in the previous video where we have the three runs and from the three runs that we have the ground speed and ground tracks and also our indicated airspeed here. We're going to deduce or calculate what is the wind speed and direction and from the wind direction we can calculate what's the true airspeed and calculate what is the error in our, in our anemometric system. We start with the uh, calculation of the components in east and north from ground track and ground speed. So that's easy because we already have our, our tracks here. We just uh, calculate with sine and cosine. And this diagram here is here just to remind us what we are doing in terms that we, in real life, again, we have three different winds, slightly different winds, or three slightly different indicated air speeds that will give us three slightly different results for each of the intersections. So let's calculate the three of them and then get the average as we saw in the previous video. For the bisectors, the lines between VG1 and VG2, we start with the midpoint, which is really easy. We, you just average out the, uh, the test points, right? So that's what we're doing here for the three conditions between test points 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. You just average out the east and north components. Right, so now we have the three midpoint coordinates of the, uh, of the lines there. Mid 1, 3, 1, 2, and then 2, 3. Those are the uh, coordinates that we just obtained. Then the uh, slope is rise over run. So you just take the uh, delta north over the delta east, and that's going to give you your slope. And we're doing this for the three runs as, as well. So this is between runs 1 and 2, 1 and 3, and 2 and 3. Again, calculating what's the delta north component over the delta east component. And then the uh, perpendicular slope is something we get from high school geometry as well. So it's the negative of one of your normal slope gives you the perpendicular slope. And same idea here. We're calculating for the three runs. Slope 1, 2 perpendicular, 1, 3 perpendicular, and 1, 2, 3 perpendicular negative one over whatever you, you had before. And now from the equation of the line y equals mx plus b, we can isolate the intercept and get b equals y minus mx. So we call, let's call the slope perpendicular 1, 2 as m12 p, okay, and so forth. So we would have b12 equals y mid 1, 2 minus m12 p times x mid 1 2 and this is what we're calculating all of the y intercepts for the three lines that we have b12 b13 and b23 and with these we can now use the equations for two bisectors and get the intersection and we're going to do this two by two as well so the y intercept is going to be m12 p times x intercept plus b12 that's for the bisector between uh, test, uh, test runs 1 and 2. And between test runs 1 and 3, it's going to be M13P times X intercept plus B13. And from these two equations, now we can equate both because it's going to be the intersections has the same uh, coordinates for the points. So my Y intercept is going to be M12P X intercept plus B12, which is also equal to b13 p x intercept plus b13 and then we can solve these two equations here for x intercept and get b12 minus b13 over m1213 p minus m12 p this is for one pair of uh, of uh, intercepts right that we just uh, 
just we just obtained this point here so we need to do for the three pairs so we we end up with these uh, these equations here which will calculate the uh, view wind east for run, between runs one and three between runs two and three and between runs one and two but it's the same concept where we're doing b12 minus b13 over m13 minus m12 okay and with this we can calculate the east component for for the wind and we can see we're pretty close we're getting differences here on the very 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 uh, far right here on the uh, decimal places so in this case because we generated the data we know the uh, the uh, difference is going to be very little and it's not going to make a little of difference if you calculate using just one intercept or three of them but in again in real life this is going to be a bit different and then since now we have the x intercept which is actually v wind east we can plug it back into the equation y intercept equals m12 p x intercept plus b12 to get v wind north for this test point this test run and we do this for each one of the runs that we had and now we have the three wind three uh, north components for the wind right same idea here it's pretty close it's changing here in the last decimal places and what do we do now well as we discussed in the previous video again let me just go back we're going to take the average of these three points to calculate what is this red point position here which we're going to consider as the true wind for the three runs uh, that's going to be really easy here we just do the average between the east component and the north component and now we have defined our east and north components to get the wind speed we just apply Pythagoras again and so the square root of, of the sum of the squares and the wind was about 10.14 knots for the uh, direction as we already saw in, in previous videos as well we have to apply the we cannot apply the arctangent directly because that gives us the wrong quadrant so we need to correct by first adding 2 pi and then doing a, a mod 2 pi this mod gets the remainder when you divide by 2 pi right so this is what we're doing here arctangent 2 of east and north components plus 2 pi mod 2 pi and here at uh, when we print we're already transforming from radians to degrees so we get 43 degrees for our wind direction and now since we have the two components north and east we can get the true air speed because we have the ground speeds and now we have the wind speeds so now we can uh, compound them and get the true air speed right so our truth true our speed is going to be almost 130 knots from now on we are going to get the true Mach and we start with the temperature so it's going to be our average indicated temperature minus recovery factor v true squared over 2 cp now that we already have v true but we need this in meters per second so we're transforming here and we're calculating what is the ambient temperature considering the compressibility of our true airspeed that we just calculated now we that we have our ambient temperature we just divide by t0 to get our theta for the test and with the theta and the true airspeed we can get the truth Mach number right so we were flying at Mach 0 0.99 and so ever so forth with the Mach number now we can calculate what is the pressure ratio PT over PA with this formula and finally we we find the position error ratio by doing this subtraction times PT over PS here so that's what we set out to find what is the pressure ratio delta PS over PS for this test point on the next part we're going to see uh, a common part here considering that we have already a few runs 
and how do we treat these runs to check against FAR25 limits. So that's coming up in the next video, which will be a common part between all of the three GPS methods that we are covering in the series. So we're going to do a, one video to show you how to do the state expansion and check out how you get Delta HPC and Delta VPC from your pressure ratio, Delta PS over PS, and that's going to be valid for, uh, for all of the uh, videos. So see you there.